everybody, it's me, Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. And this is another episode of... Downloadable Content! You recall my recent review of Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, don't you? Well, recently, Bethesda released their highly anticipated add-on to their famed Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, on the Xbox 360 anyway, called Dungod. So let's take a look at it together, shall we? Now, none of the content starts when you see this guy, or overhear people talking about the Dawn God. Heard there was one Dawn God. Vampire hunters or something in the old fort near Riften. From there, you get to this said fort. Inside, you see the leader, Isran, talking to us, Tendar Vigilant. Isran is a rather serious character, which makes him awesome! I cover my tracks and I keep my eyes open. If you're smart, you'll do the same. Isran sends you through a cave filled with skeletons, new death hounds, giant spiders, and a fuckload of Lombards! Get through that to hit this button. <laughs> that was my hand, Cocker. Then push magic braziers to raise a tomb carrying all all. So all I have to do is unearth tombs to meet fine women? I was expecting someone like me, at least. Hot? I apologize. This is Sarana, a lumpa. You help her back to her castle, guarded by a guy with the most obvious tale to tell. I watched the gate. Ain't much else to do. That's about it. The return of Serana is highly heralded. Her father, Lord Harkin? I guess vampirism's like herpes. If you got it, why not spread it around? He offers you the opportunity to become like him, or be prey. Deny his gift, and you'll be thrown out. Return to Isran to tell him the Wampas have an Elder Scroll, then get your next orders. Accept the gift, and Harkin will make you a Lumpile Lord. This perk has its own leveling up system, similar to the werewolves' new leveling up system, where Kill's turn raises your skill tree possibilities. The Wampas then send you to a shack above a magic pool with druggy hellspawn waltzing about. Do what you came to do and move on. If you're of the Dawn Guard, Isran sends you after two specific recruits. This guy needs help killing a bear. This woman needs you to find her satchel filled with dwarven gyros. Not to be confused with edible gyros, I do. Bring them back to the fort so Isran can tell them what he wants them to do. He'll then point out to you Sarana is at the fort with info regarding her Elder Scroll. If you're a Lumpire, you hear of the Elder Scroll thing from Harkin instead. Either way, you're sent out to do the same thing. Your job is to find a Moth Priest. These priests use moths to read Elder Scrolls. Don't ask. Find one imprisoned by rival Lumpars. Break him out of hole, take him back to HQ, and have him translate the prophecy in the scroll. Turns out you need one more Elder Scroll. Serana has an idea on who has it. Now we have to actually locate it. Use this sundial to open a path into more caverns. Eventually you come across Serana's mother's lab. Piecing together her formula, you open a way into oblivion. This soul cairn spot houses trapped souls. Also there, Serana's mother is hanging. She has the other scroll, but can't get to it until you kill three keepers. These are not benign green shits with four arms or lovely little elves with Irish accents. They're big skeletal cocksackers! Open the way to our personal quarters before... Il Dragone! Defeat it to get the last Elder Scroll. Now with Serana will be out of... I would speak with you, Quinarin. Whoa! Dragons like talking to me. I don't know what it is. Looks like we've got another friendly Dorva at our side. Having two scrolls is nice, except the scroll reader is blind now! It is up to us to read the last scroll. 
In this immaculate meadow, we cut some bark off a tree, attract moths, then translate the next location for the prophesized weapon detailed in the previous scroll. From there, we get to more caverns! Along the way, we meet a snow elf guarding a shrine to Ariel, the lord of the prophesied bow we seek. He wants you to draw water from five other shrines so we can open the way to the final sanctum where his brother is. Alright, so here we go. Through marvelous caverns into a displaced open world filled with charm, wonder, and what the fuck is that? Yes, these paths are long. After five shrines, we locate the sanctum. That's where the warped brother of the knight we met previously awaits. He sends frozen minions after you. Kill them so he'll take the fight outside. He reveals he had been turned to, and doctored the scrolls to take the bow he protected with vampire blood to strike at the god. Kill him, then take the bow. Now it's back to Harkin. He'll let you choose between handing him the bow to kill Serana with it or kill him. Sheesh, tough choice. Either go with this pretty piece of tail or his freaky ass. You die now, big man. This last battle is actually unimpressive. His powers basically make him a bitch to keep track of, and that's it. Slay the prick and Serana will follow you from then on if you choose. And that's pretty much it. So what did I think of this downloadable content? It's, uh, adequate. Really, that's about it. Constantly fighting vamps or dawn guard troops, more long caverns, and a slew of extra Falmar does not have as much punch as you'd think. The new locations do give you new alchemic agents, and some of them are rather interesting. Fort Dawnguard and Castle Valhar are quaint spots to stay in with lovely bonus side missions. Completing the quest one side or another grants more prestige, I would assess, but it doesn't effectively change the overall storyline. Gargoyles and Deathhounds do add to the challenge. Vampires were always a raving bitch to kill. That goddamn disease they spread gets you if they look at you crooked. Being a vampire has its usual downside. You have to feed on someone sleeping to keep the sun from screwing you. There is a strong attack you could use as a vampire lord, which does the same thing, though I have yet to learn it. The vampire lord perk itself can get annoying. It takes longer than it should to transform. When you are a new lord, your power is shit. To gain some takes a lot of transforming. To stay in lord form leaves you vulnerable and incapable of speaking with people. You'll have to keep waiting for the transform animations if you want to beef yourself up. Of course, like all Elder Scrolls missions, this one is long. The caves are long. The enemies are plentiful, and sooner or later you'll throw your hands up and say, When do I get out of this shit hell? Meeting a real snow elf notwithstanding, some of that which gets you to the end seems needlessly drawn out. Also, do not attempt this unless you are at least on level 45. You will not get through anything beforehand. Unless you're good at running or cheating, save yourself the aggravation of trying prior to level 45. I'll push and say level 30 plus. Overall, if you've already put in about 100 hours in one character, you have to add this to it. But if you're not really a fan of the original title, you're probably not going to be turned into one because of this. Now, thank you all for watching. I have more for you soon to come. So stay tuned, take care, have a great day. Watch the gate. Ain't much else to